All right, it was requested that I look at the A-level physics paper one uh, and go through it. So I'm going to do that now. Um, yeah, so question one. Horizontal escape lanes made of loose gravel have been constructed at the side of some roads and on steep hills so that vehicles can stop safely when their brakes fail. Figure one shows an engineer's prediction of how the speed of an unpowered vehicle will vary with time as the vehicle comes to rest in an escape lane. Okay. Determine the force decelerating the vehicle two seconds after entering the escape lane. Okay, so uh, what you have to do for this, uh, you need to use the fact that F equals MA, uh, and what you have to do is the instantaneous acceleration at any time will be the gradient of a velocity time graph or a speed time graph. So you are going to have to take the gradient, which means I'm going to need some kind of straight edge. And I'm going to set this so that it makes straight lines. So using a ruler and at two seconds, you draw a gradient and you want a reasonably sized gradient. Well, that's not right. Yeah, close enough. Okay, so here we go. So, change in Y, for me, that's... Each one of these is 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's, tw oops, so this is 12 to 5, so that's 7, that's 1, I'm going to go 4, so that's 3, so the gradient is 7 divided by 3, so force is 1.8 times 10 to the 4 times 7 thirds. So calculator, let's probably remember the numbers. 1.8 times 10 to the 4 times 7 over 3, 42,000, four point two times 10 to the 4 newtons. So a quick check of the mark scheme, and I'm off on my final mark, uh, and I'm going to chalk that up to the fact that I can't use a proper ruler on my iPad screen uh, and get the perfect tangent um, for it, but I'm, I'm reasonably close. The expected answer was about 4.8 times 10 to the 4 newtons, um, and just my, uh, yeah, my, my tangent is just not good enough. Uh, and I'm going to chalk that up to me having to do this on my iPad. Okay, so let's take a look at question two then. So to deduce whether a lane of length 85 meters is long enough to stop the vehicle, assuming that the engineer's graph is correct. Okay, so for this, if you've got a velocity time graph, what you need to do is find the area under the curve. <coughs> and if it is 
more than 85, it's not long enough. If it's less than 85, then it is. So I'm going to start just by... So if I look here, well, this is... So one big square. So a 4 by 4 square like that is 10 meters. 5 by 2. So that's 10. That's another 10. 5, 2.5. So that's 10, 2.5. That combined with that is another 2.5. So this whole thing we'll say is 5. Uh, I mean, this here is maybe 7 meters. I'm just going to rough estimate that as 5, and I'll estimate this is also 5. So 30, 40, that, that, and that is 50, 57. Okay, so I don't, I don't have to be super precise with this. I have to show evidence that I'm, I'm counting somehow. Okay, um, you can't use SUVAC because it's not constant acceleration. Okay, you won't get any marks for that. Um, so I'm, you know, looking at this and yeah, so area under the graph. is about 57 meters, therefore it is long enough. Okay, so what they're going to look for is specifically that you're looking at the graph to estimate what there is under the graph. They're going to look for a co one correct technique with a number associated with it. So showing that one, like one of these squares is 2.5 or that like the big square is 10, you have to show an actual method. You could use the trapezoid method to estimate as well. And then they want to see both a final answer based on your counting or calculations and a conclusion that it is in fact long enough. So just putting the answer, putting this 57, I wouldn't get the third mark. Okay, so discuss the energy transfers that take place when a vehicle is decelerated in an escape lane. Well, um, all of your kinetic energy goes to thermal, uh, and it'll be in the tires, and the, the road itself. Uh, also, some of your kinetic energy will actually be transferred as kinetic energy into the gravel. Okay, so... Um, you know, that's kind of what they're what they're they're looking for. So like any two of the energy transfers, you could also say, oh, there's potential energy because some of the gravel will be kicked up into the air. Don't just shorthand it either. You should write proper full sentences. I'm just um, shorthanding it here for the space, uh, for the sake of uh, of brevity. But yeah, so those are the two energy transfers that you need to to think of, think of, and um, you do need to, when you're talking about the friction, you can't just say, oh, it's kinetic into thermal. You have to say what is actually heating up, okay? And it will be the tires, uh, basically anywhere anywhere where there's friction, there will be heating up. So the tires, the gravel, I mean, if it's really deep gravel, the lorry itself will end up heating up. Uh, so make sure you're covering that. Now here, an alternative to an escape lane is a ramp. Okay, so our escape ramp, so it has 
an angle of 25 to the horizontal and is 85 meters long. Okay, so this is, um, oh, I really like this question because it's so much more simple than you actually realize. Um, so number one, always, always, always draw a diagram. Okay, so our ramp, our escape ramp, Okay. And it has a 25 degree angle to the horizontal, which, by the way, would be a really steep gradient for this rope or for this road. 25 degrees would be would be would feel very, very steep. OK. Um, and we know that it's 85 meters long. So what you have to think of is what's the energy transfer that's happening? Well, in this case, because there's no friction and air resistance decelerating it, the only thing decelerating it is the fact that it's moving up. And because it's going up, it's getting GPE. So the energy transfer is kinetic energy to gravitational potential energy. So what we have to look at is, is this long enough to stop a vehicle with the amount of kinetic energy it has. So we have to look and we are starting at 17.5 meters per second. Okay, so what we have to look at is um, essentially is this is this a big enough raise in order for it to be zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it like this, so that 1 half mv squared is equal to mgh. So actually, the mass of my vehicle doesn't matter. Okay, so 1 half v squared is equal to g times h. So the h that I need in order to be safe, and this is H, so the H that I need to be safe is going to be equal to V squared over 2G. So 17.5 squared divided by 2 times Okay, calculator, divided by 2 times 9.81, oh, it actually read the 9 on the first time. So my height has to be at least 15.6 meters. So, if I look here, this H, okay, so uh, cosine of 25 is equal to H over 85. So H is therefore going to be equal to 85 cos 25. No, sine, not sine, not cos, sine, Sokotoa. Okay, and uh, I would have realized that right away. Um, you got to think that actually sine starts small and gets bigger, cosine starts big and gets smaller. So, um, yeah, that's not going to work. So. Uh... Eighty five sine twenty five. Ooh, that's not going to work. Is thirty five point nine meters. So thirty five point nine is greater than fifteen point six. Therefore, it will be safe.
Okay, so that's one method to do it. That's how. That's how immediately what I thought of was it's about getting. You got to think of it in terms of work uh, and energy and how the energy transfers are happening. So uh, my next bit here, one point five. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so this really, there's a lot of ways that you can approach this. I would say that the gravel feels... You're going up so high. 15 meters is so high. Not only that, so at 15.6 meters, so... Um, 15.6 divided by sine 25... So that's 36 meters total travel. So you actually probably will end up stop. So you'll stop faster at a faster rate with this ramp. But 15 meters is is high. That's 15 meters, man. That's a lot. That's a floor and a half. That's You're almost at the second story of a of a uh, second floor of a building here, um, like that's really high uh, to go up. Plus, when you stop, you'll start rolling backwards. Okay, uh, whereas I mean, in the gravel, it'll feel violent. It'll be really noisy. Trust me, it's noisy going off onto a gravel shoulder, um, and there's more potential to damage your vehicle. But if your brakes are failing, and that's how, why you have to do it, you'll start rolling backwards if you go up the hill. I mean, it's this is a value judgment question. It's not a right or a wrong answer. You just have to have a reason. Now, for me, I would say that the, the, the ramp probably is the safer experience while it's happening. Um, but there's a reason that we have gravel lanes and not ramps everywhere for for an escape ramp for 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 this, uh, apart from the uh, huge expense of building it. Um, it just would look weird, and it would it would it it just wouldn't feel right. Um, yeah, it really doesn't matter which one you pick. You just have to have a valid reason to do it. I would say the gravel because the rolling backwards and you're so high up when you are doing this. Like, what if you go off the side of the ramp? No, I don't like the ramp at all. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. All right, so that's question one. Okay, hopefully that will help. 